So this is the beginning of our series on the nervous system. Nervous system. So why do we need one of those? Anyone? Why do we need a nervous system? To not die. To move. Those are all true. To feel. Yeah, I like that. Okay. It does all those things. So how do we sum that up? I'm going to throw this at you. It is the primary communication and control system of the body. It's not the only one, but it's the primary one. There are other ways that that the body can communicate, or cells in the body can communicate with other cells. Um, one of those ways is with hormones. But you have different reasons that for sending different messages. Here's a good example. Uh, if I wanted to alert everyone in the state of Missouri about the flooding, you know, or hey, flash floods are, are happening, how would I do that? Do the beeping thing. I would do the do the emergency alert system, which goes over all the televisions and all over the, all the radios and things like that, and it hits a lot of people uh, on their phones and whatnot if they've got like apps for that. So I would broadcast it. That's basically what a hormone does. It's a chemical that's put into the bloodstream that affects everything. Okay, but if I wanted to be a little more exact, let's say I had something specifically to send to my wife right now. How would I do that? At school? No, okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's how I would do it. It's a text message. It's the quickest way to do it, okay? Uh, and it would go just to her. Nervous system is kind of like the text messaging and phone line and internet of the body, okay? Because you can send it directly to whomever you'd like to. And so here's how it works. The nervous system... is made of a network of, and this is my favorite words to write in this whole lecture, living wires. Living wires. Folks, what do wires conduct? Guess what nerves conduct? Electricity. That's how they operate. They send electricity through. A very, very small amount, but they operate electrically. That's how they send information to and from the brain and all the places in the body. Okay, so now let's take a look here and see how it breaks down. So in the middle of your paper, not from top to bottom, but middle left to right, I want you to write nervous system again. You don't need to write the word again. And then from there, we're going to divide it out. And we're going to see a lot of divisions. It's going to take up pretty much the rest of your paper down. I'll try to make it all fit for you. All right. If we were to divide the nervous system up into two things, what would those two things be? Those are those are all divisions as we go down here. Okay, sympathetic. I heard sympathetic, parasympathetic. I heard nerves and brain. And that's another division further down here. I heard autonomic somatic is another division down here. There we go. Well, Riley, was that you? Yeah. Would you? Yes. We're going to divide the first division is the central. The central nervous system and I wrote it like that because oftentimes it's abbreviated CNS and I wanted to be able to draw that line so you'd see that the CNS 
And there's really only two things in the central nervous system. Brian, I'm just kidding, it's brain. But for whatever reason, when I see brain, I think Brian. I, I don't know why. All right. Brain and what? Spinal cord. My, uh, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but my my grandpa, my mom's dad, Opa, was Wolf, his name was Wolfgang, which is where I get one of my middle names. He he had a tree nursery, and like you know, at the bottom of the tree is that big ball of like roots and dirt and stuff like that you plant. He used to call that the brain. So you must plant the tree below the z- 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 brain, and like like the brain had to be in the ground. I don't, I don't know why. Uh, maybe years later we'll find out he was right. Yeah, that's actually the brain of the tree. But he always called it that. I don't know why that just triggered that memory. And now you viewers and listeners at home are aware of that, too. All right. So um, what's next? If it's not central, what is it? Peripheral. Peripheral. Where have you heard this word before? Uh Uh-huh. What does it mean? You can kind of see it, but not really. That is true. How do they test for it in your in your driver's exam? Yeah. Yeah. You look through the thing and they flash a light on one side or the other. You can't like look over that way, but you can perceive that the light's on one side or the other. Because you can see 180 degrees in front of your face. But you really are only focused on the <coughs> things that are in your direct field of vision things that are off to the side or peripheral. So then from context, what do you think peripheral means? Like your arms and legs. Right, things that are off to the side of center. So arms and legs and your in your internal organs and things like that. But now what we're going to do is we're going to divide slightly unusually here, okay? <coughs> we're going to divide these into direction and this is important for the same reason there are more than there's more than one lane on highway 55 can you imagine if they pared that down to one lane from like cape to st louis just one lane not two just one what would happen everyone would die people wouldn't drive it or only the brave or really really stupid would but yeah and you need to have directions of flow, okay? The same reason we have uh, veins and arteries, because one's going away, one's coming back to. Our nerves only have the capacity to send information one direction. So a nerve is set up, and, uh, and the wire of the nerve is set up, or the long part of the nerve is set up, and it can only go from here to here. It cannot go backwards. Wires in your house can, you know, you can, electricity will flow whichever direction you want it to go, forwards, backwards. When you set up a wire, a house, you don't have to, but this is the side that goes to and from. It can go either way. It's fine. But uh, in your body, the nerves have to send either to or from. Those, those living wires are set up in only one specific way to make that happen. If it's going back to, it's named, or it's going into the central nervous system, It is named for the same thing that goes into the glomerulus. Does anybody remember the name of the arteriole that goes into the glomerulus? It is the afferent. Okay? The afferent division. The afferent division is sending information to the CNS. Okay, sending it to the CNS. So all this information, what what information does the brain really need? What's it? Co- yeah, that's what it's collecting right now from you while you're sitting at your at your desk there, and your your body's telling you how hard your chair is and how tightly you're holding your writing utensil and what the ambient temperature of the room is and and how how tight your socks are. All that information is being sent to your brain. It's all sensory. 
So all the afferent division is sending sensory information to the CNS. So here, the other side, if it's not afferent in the nephron, what was the other choice? It was efferent. Such is the case here. Again, it has to do with the direction of flow. The efferent division. This one is from CNS. Now, before I write anything else down here, we have to make another division of the information that comes from the central nervous system is going to be divided out in a couple ways as well. And it is divided out of whether or not we get to choose if we can actually control these things or not. The first one we can control, that is the somatic nervous system. Almost to the bottom, gang. Hang on there. Somatic nervous system. Somatic nervous system, we have the ability to control. Okay? We have conscious <coughs> motor control. So right now that your 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 hand is forcing your pen to make these letters and your you're forcing your head to look up and then back down, up and then back down. That is all part of the somatic nervous system because it's conscious mo consciously motor control, which is an efferent division of the peripheral nervous system which comes from the central. Okay, if you can't control it and it happens by itself, it is called the autonomic autonomic nervous system. Auto being self and you're going to be in either one of two phases or variations of one of two phases of this. Of this, and you guys might remember AP Psych students, what are they? There we go. Sympathetic the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division. I'm not sure why I made that Y that way. Parasympathetic division. <coughs> it is healthy for us to be in one of these most of the time it's not healthy for us to be in the other most of the time. Which one should we be in most of the time? Parasympathetic, because this is rest and repose. This is chilling. This is normal. This is healthy. This is where your blood pressure is in a normal, healthy range. And of all the things here that are important, digestion, Uh, increases normally. Okay. Okay. Now, on the sympathetic, its nickname is the what? Fight, fight or flight. This is the instances where the body is prepared to do one of two things to either fight or to run away. And in this, we're going to see heart rate increase, airways open, digestion decrease. And this is just a short list of the dozens and dozens of things that actually happen in either of these divisions. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on with either of these.
this is just the shortened version of it. But that's why, and we watched a video on this about stress. That's why stress plays such a havoc on the body because we're not meant, stress kicks your body into this phase where you, where your body is preparing to fight or run away. Your heart rates increase, your blood pressures increase, so on and so forth. Okay? Which means that blood flow is diverted away from the digestive system, which means that a lot of people that are stressed out all the time have a lot of digestive problems very, very naturally. You know, uh, acid reflux and, you know, heartburn and indigestion and all kinds of things like that because there's not a normal healthy amount of blood flow. It's not to say that all people with digestive problems are constantly stressed, but there's a correlation between this type of stress and this. Now, parasympathetic is great most of the time, but if you have an exaggerated parasympathetic response, that's bad too. What's the opposite of this bullet point? Airways close. When people are allergic to bee stings and allergic to peanut butter and things like that, or peanuts, and their body goes into anaphylaxis, it mimics what would be an exaggerated parasympathetic response. Basically, their airways, instead of opening, relax, closed, like all the way. What do they need to carry to get out of that? Epinephrine, Epinephrine or an EpiPen. Epinephrine is the actual name for adrenaline. That injection <coughs> into the bloodstream kicks the body into this, which immediately opens the airways, increases the heart rate, you know, and so on and so forth, to get everything kind of back into a normal kick. So, all right. Got one little area right here. We're going to write down one more piece of information uh, about types of cells, and then we're going to call it a day for lecture. So, two types. cells in the nervous system. Now there's a dozen different types of cells in the nervous system, but what I'm saying here is they're going to all fit into one of two categories. It's either going to be a neuron. A neuron is nothing more than a nerve cell, which is the living wire. The other thing is neuroglia. Although, oh, sure, yeah, right on the line. Neuroglia is otherwise known as a glial cell. So if you hear glial cell, it means the same thing. This word literally means nerve glue. These are the supporting cells that surround our neurons. Basically, they do lots of different functions. Some of them include, like, they'll, they will remove or eat the trash around the nerves, like the debris. They will surround and insulate the neurons. Some of them are responsible for producing cerebrospinal fluid. They do a lot of different support functions. So neurons cannot really do their job without neuroglia taking care of and supporting them to be able to do that job. So. So that's basically it. Now there's a number of different types of these here, like I said, and we'll get into more detail on that later, but this is, this is sufficient for, uh, for today.